Aaron, it's Wiseman Perez. I'm the market director for UBS and Global Wealth Management. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much for, for taking the time to join us here. Oh, my pleasure. This afternoon. Uh, I know you've spent quite some time in the NHL. Uh, I played at the collegiate level, played basketball, uh, not quite the pro level, so you've had a tremendous success, but uh, happy to discuss your, your legacy and, and what the things you've done in, in the hockey rink and then also outside of it, the impact you've left. Appreciate you having me. First question, can you tell us a little bit about your transition from hockey player to youth hockey coach? The first year once I stopped playing was probably one of the toughest years. You're so set with the schedule. They give you, you know, where to be, what to do. And so that first year of not kind of not knowing what I was doing was a little difficult, but you know, you kind of get your own routine. Yeah, I have kids and so I got to get on their schedule, but uh, it was tough, but you kind of get used to it. What is your favorite part about coaching the next generation of hockey players? And what's one off the ice lesson that you like to leave with your players? Well, for the younger kids, it's just getting out there and having fun. Uh, you know, you want them to come back, you want them to keep playing hockey. And I think that's key for me is, you know, have a little more fun with them, make them want to come back, make them want to come to the rink. And as they get older, I put a little more pressure on them. Like right now I'm coaching a U18 team and, you know, they're 17, 18 year old kids. So uh, we demand a little bit more, but I think for the younger kids, just making sure they have fun, making sure they want to come back is really important for me. Aaron, can you speak a little bit about working with Brian Trottier on the Indigenous Alumni Tour? What, what was that experience like? Well, I'm lucky enough I get to do it every year. There's a group of alumni Indigenous players that travel up to remote areas. Usually we're up in the, the Yukon, we're up in the Northwest Territories, we're up in a lot of these remote reservations that you don't usually see like guys like Brian Trotche, myself, John Chabot, come out there. So, uh, you know, it's great for the kids. We, uh, we go to the schools, we talk with the kids, we share our experiences, Brian's experiences. We usually have a little uh, charity game with the local team, and then we have a big feast. It's a great experience, and, and anytime you get to spend some time with Brian Trotche, it's, uh, it, it, it's pretty special. Part of my role actually at UBS is I'm, I'm the co-chair of Mosaic, which is our employee diversity network and increasing representation throughout the firm. Um, how important has it been for you to discuss your family history and, and represent the First Nations people in the NHL? Well, it's, I, I think it's very important. It was something that I held very dear to me while I was playing, represent First Nations and uh, it's something that I still hold dear to my heart. I, I try to do as many things as I can with the reservations back home. Um, obviously, when I was younger, they, they were a big part of me, you know, make it to the next level uh, financially. And um, so whatever I could do that will help the next, uh, the next generation, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do it. Aaron, can you tell us a little bit about your involvement with the 43 Oak Foundation? I've been helping out Sean. I try to do as much as I can. We usually come out, run a practice, interact with the kids. He's been just been doing a fantastic job at 43 Oak, and uh, 43 Oak has a great turnout every year, uh, just growing and growing and growing. So we get out there, we try to pass on a little bit what what we learned growing up, and uh, you know, just get out there, have some fun, shoot the pucks around, chat up the kids. Uh, what they're doing right now, it's, it, it's amazing. One thing that you referenced earlier was the life after hockey, life after you're playing. How important is education to you and the players you work with? Well, I think education is very important. We kind of have a rule, me and, and my old coach, that school is number one, first of all, you know, especially at a young age. Uh, they go over test scores to make sure they're doing good in school, which is important. And uh, you know, you're always there just to, to listen, to talk. If any, if any kid having problems, you know, it's always good. They always seem to feel comfortable with a coach. And you know, we're, we're an ear, we're a voice, and you know, we try to do what we can for these kids. Did you receive any kind of financial literacy training while playing professional hockey? Not so much when I was playing. My first few years, I think as my career went on, the more the, they're kind of worrying about life after hockey. Uh, usually when you're 16, 17, you leave home early to go play junior, and that's when the agents come. 
usually if you have the, a good agent, a right agent, they're going to worry about life after hockey. So they do introduce you to financial guys and, you know, how to protect your money, how to make more money. And, uh, but yeah, but now I think it's, it's getting a lot, a lot better than, than what it was. What inspired you to start the Aaron's Chance to Play Foundation? Growing up, uh, I had three brothers, so there's four of us in the family. Not much money around, uh, extra money. So, uh, like I said earlier, I had uh, a lot of reservations uh, that would help out. I had friends, family that would help out. So when I, once I got to a position where I could give back, I came up with uh, Aaron's Chance to Play. I think we've been going for 17, 18 years now. And it just uh, deviates the cost of travel, equipment, registration, hotels. So we, we try to help out as, uh, as many kids as we can. I think uh, we're 40, 50 kids usually a year. So we're trying to help as, as, many, as many kids as we can because it is a very expensive sport. And just to get a little more specific, in what way specifically has the, has the foundation helped improve the lives of the children and the families that are involved? Well, it, just, it definitely takes that financial burden off them, which we all know is, is it's tough, uh, especially when you got a big household, four or five kids, you know, that extra thousand, two thousand dollars is, it's tough. So we're there to kind of help them, help them with whatever financial needs they, they have and uh, just to get them, to get their children playing hockey and uh, get them around that team atmosphere. And uh, so it's, it's great. And then the last question I have here, we all know the tremendous success you had on the ice. Uh, incredible career, 15 year career. Uh, kudos to you at that level is, is tremendous to be able to do that. Um, what type of legacy do you want to be remembered as, as a coach now? As a coach, I think just someone that cares about his players, uh, that wants the best for him. I tend to get uh, a little fired up, but uh, you know, that's those competitive juices so I just want to just make sure they're having fun make sure they're learning to play the game the right way the honest way and uh, you know uh, just want them to keep coming back to the rink every day it's the most important thing for me